It's very Halloween-y. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll kick that orange color up. We'll, we'll increase the, ten the intensity. These are your, your colors of your lights right here. Um, so you just wanna make sure you increase the range, increase the intensity. And as you're light baking, you're always gonna wanna be going through different lights too and changing those settings and, and keep baking and rebaking and getting the result you want. You know, it's all about playing with the lights and, and trying to get that feel of the game. So, you know, we'll increase the intensity pretty high on this. Um, and the range we're also gonna increase too because we just wanna really see the, the effect of what the light probes do to your characters. And this is just a dramatic way of showing that. So we'll increase that. Yeah, maybe I'll make it more of like a yellowy, yellowy color. Yeah, I kind of like that. And we'll increase that, increase the range of that point light. And real quick, I'm just going to go back into my light baking settings. And now that I have my lights back on, I'm gonna do a real quick rebake just to have that new light in that new bake we did. So we'll bake our scene. We'll see now it's going to rebake the scene. Oh. You know what? Actually, let me turn that ambience down. Like I said before, you <laughs> always forget the steps. Always forget about that yeah. ambience. Go back in your ambience, turn the ambience back down. The good news is if you happen to not catch that slide, these are going to be recorded and online in a couple weeks, and you can go and take a screenshot or download a slide deck and tack that up on your wall. Absolutely. <laughs> so you can see I brought the ambience back down. Now I'm rebaking the scene. It's calculating, doing its work for the, the light baking. And it's baking the texture at the moment. And now the light bake is done. Cool. And you can see right there, you know, it, it, see the result of putting that light in there kind of give this really intense kind of lit area, which is kind of nice because that's our goal, right? We want to protect that. And so that gives us a kind of a beacon for our characters to know where they have to go. Now we'll go, we'll turn the light mapping off. We will turn our lights off. We will go back into our ambient light. And this is kind of like a, you know, a two to three step process every time. You want to turn that back up, bring those characters back. Sometimes it helps to write down those initial values that you have just to get them exact before and after so your scene kind of stays the same, but... Absolutely. And then you'll see, too. you'll see, okay, I brought the ambience back up. Now I want to do some light probes. And light probes are a very tedious process. So it's, it's not something that happens quickly, but there are some scripts available out there that make it much, much easier. Because normally you have to place them all by hand. Normally you have to create a light probe, you have to grab that light probe, create another one, create another one, and space them equally apart in huge areas of your project, and it takes forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> but there are some really great scripts out there that people have written to make this process much, much easier. And one of the scripts I found was this script called Light Probe Helper. And you can find this script for free online. Uh, just look for it in the Unity forums and stuff. Everybody knows where it is, you can get it. And then from there, you download that script, you put it in your product project, and you're going to make a game object called Light Probe Group. That's just, I just called it Light Probe Group for the sake of the project, you can call it whatever you want. And you attach this script, which is your Light Probe Generator script, I think that's the name of the script, Light Probe Generator. Light Probe Generator. But I think if you just Light Probe Helper, helper yeah, you will find that's it. How I found it. Most people know it as Light Probe Helper. Add this script, Light Probe Generator script, to your Light Probe group. And then I think on your, on your Light Probe group, you also want to go to um, Components, Rendering, and then you want to make it a Light Probe group. And we that already, adds that other middle component underneath your transform over there. That brings this one up right here. So right now, it'll actually come on when you actually add that light probe group to that light probe group that you created in there. So create okay. your game object, go to component, and go it's to rendering. That when you download the package, there's a little- Package little has some instructions in it instructions. that kind of give you those instructions, but you wanna create your game object, add that light probe group, and then you basically right here, you'll see that it puts this light probe generator script in your, in your game object. So from there, You'll see in here have all these light probes. And what that script did was actually take an area. It lets you define this square. You have like the, the positioning of the square, and then you have a dimensions of your square, your X, Y, and Z variables. And if you go in here, you can kind of see right here in your probe volume, it gives you the Text space. Text gets a little scrunched in there, but that's the, uh, yeah, talk about those values there? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I don't know what's going on with <laughs> that right there. But basically it tells you the center values of where this volume of light probes is gonna be, and you set those values, and then these bottom ones right here are gonna tell you exactly the size of this kind of volume of light probes that you're gonna make. So really, and trust me, it seems a little tedious, but using this is so you much had, easier. It looked like hundreds of yeah. You see, doing that by hand would just be, it would take forever. Wow. It would take forever. But some people do it. Yeah, some people do it. Um, so anyways, get this script. It's really, really going to help you out. Once you generate, you do those values, and you have this kind of, you'll see right here, I have this big red 
kind of outlined volume, it's gonna make that volume. You wanna center it along the area of where you're going to put all these probes, right? So right now, for the sake of what we're doing, I actually already pre-generated these probes, but when you're doing this before, you're not going to see those in there. Once you do that, you're going to click generate and it's going to create all these probes within this grid. And for the sake of time, I already have those in there just so you can see what it's gonna look like when you initially do cool, that. Okay. So make sure you get your grid set where you want it, and that's that red box you're gonna see right here. Once that's done, then you click generate, then you're gonna get all these probes within that volume that you created. And basically what you wanna do is just put those probes along the path of where your characters are going to run. And don't worry about having the probes go underneath your scene or anywhere else. You just wanna make sure that they kind of more or less fill the area of where any of the characters or anything that's dynamic is going to be moving within your scene. And then from there, once you have all those light probes set in the area that you want, you're just going to go into your window settings, go back to the light mapping window that we had before, click on the bake tab, and then instead of doing bake scene like we did before, let me guess, bake. We're actually gonna go to bake probes. probes. And then you click bake probes, it's gonna go through its process, and then it's a lot quicker than making the scene, wow, it's already it done. Fast. But now we have our probes baked. And so from there, you can actually, you wanna keep your light probe group off, but just click something else in your scene and you won't see all those light probes. You're only gonna see those if you click on that light probe game object. And be aware too, the more probes you have, your scene will start to run very, very slow. Hmm. So if you have a bunch of these different volumes of light probes, I recommend doing the same thing I do with lights, is I would throw them into a game object because if you have a bunch of these, your scene's going to run very, very slow. And this is one of the things you wanna do probably near the end of when you're actually going to go to, to um, release. So just, just be aware of that. It, sometimes it crashes if you have a lot of light probes. If you've got thousands of them running at one time, it will crash. Okay. So um, just be aware of that. It's just kind of a good, good rule of thumb. Um, but anyways, now that we have those, we can test the scene out and actually see these light probes working. So. Um, oh, you also want to make sure on your characters, anything that you want affected by your light probes, you want to click on those characters, click on the model of the characters, and there's a little option under your mesh renderer. You'll have cast shadows, receive shadows, and then make sure use light probe right here is selected. There's this little option right here that says use light probe. be checked off. Or that has to be has checked to be. off or they will look like nothing's going on. Okay, cool. So with that being said, we'll test our scene and just enter your play mode. And you'll see my little guy right here, as I run, was he being affected by the lights? Does that run through here? Was that light off when you baked it? When you, uh... uh no, it should be there. It should be, actually, you know, here. Good way to test, is we can bring our ambience down and really see if these light probes are being affected. So right now, actually, it doesn't look like he's being affected by those lights at all. So what we can do is go back into our light probe group. Let's make sure that everything's working. Recheck the settings. Yeah, recheck the settings. Make sure everything's on. You want to make sure your light probe works are working. Let's regenerate just in case. Generate. Um, light probe's working. Okay. That's working. Let's go back into our window settings. Turn That's our the thing. lights. Sometimes there's a bunch of steps. You got to make sure every step that you it's get. Always a bunch of steps. There's always ten steps to make sure something happens. You always <laughs> want to make sure you recheck to make sure it's it's working correctly. Uh, make sure your lights are on. Go to window. Go to our light mapping. Go back to our. Just to be safe, let's bake the scene real quick. Oh, we'll bake the probes, and then we'll also. Okay. Go back in. Look like those are good. I'll tell you what, while you check that out, okay. we'll cruise on and start talking about reducing draw calls, and then we'll switch back to that demo a little bit towards the end. So since we got a lot of subjects to cover here today, we'll move on to the next one. We'll start talking about optimizing draw calls. You can check out that scene, and we'll loop back to that momentarily. Sound good? That sounds great. Let's do it. So optimizing draw calls. Oh, actually, oh, you know what? You can see. You can see got here. It? Yeah. All right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I think that. my lights just aren't <laughs> as intense as they should be. Okay. But if you'll notice my character, it's very, very subtle at the moment. Oh, I yeah. don't think I my lights there. are very as close to the character as they should be. But you'll notice even when I run through this green right here, you can see that he's subtly being affected by those green yeah, lights. Yeah, I saw it right when he ran kind of on top over there. Yeah, and you can right see here, there, he yeah. kind of actually gets hit right there too. And that probably has to do with the fact that my lights aren't as close to the character as they should be, and the intensity should have been 
the brought up way, way up. But yeah, you can see as I go to the end right there, he actually is being affected. It's just a very, very subtle, subtle lighting effect. So that's just, uh, uh, I should just turn my lights up and basically, and that's what you want to do. You want to play with your lights and, and get the result you want. Okay. So um, what I'll do is, Adam, as you're going through your next thing, I'll just kind of turn those up and, and show what that looks like. Perfect. So they get an idea. All right. All right. Thank you. No problem. Cool. All right, let's go back talking about draw calls. Draw calls are one of the two major, or one of the several major things to look out for. A draw call happens when a draw, when a, there's a call issued to the graphics API to draw an object. And I like to think of it as, as your, as the computer has to render out your scene, every time you have to paint out a texture, it's essentially like changing a, pa a paintbrush. The system's really drawing with textures. Each model, typically by default, without any kind of uh, optimization techniques, has one draw call. It's going to be constantly switching from one texture to paint this object, one texture to paint another object. Now, draw calls affect CPU. The more draw calls you have, uh, the more your CPU is affected. So on mobile, you t typically try to target about... Um, on mobile, I try to, depending on the device I'm going for, if I want to cover all devices, you want to stay within that 50 to 90 kind of range. 90's pushing it, and maybe you only have some hiccups here and there where it spikes up to 90. But as a rule of thumb, as in general, you kind of want to keep around 50 to 60. And the older lower, devices. Lower, lower devices, you, you want to keep around 30 to 40. I wouldn't even go higher than that. Gotcha. And that's just, you know, this is what optimization does. A, a good way to really tell if you're getting those draw calls or not is within Unity, when you test your game, right here, if, if you want to look at my screen, as I test my game, you'll notice that there's this little window at the top called stats. You'll see that right here. What you want to do is click stats and you'll see in here the draw call. So right now I have all my lights turned on on my scenes. I'm you know going through it and rebaking and you see I have some dynamic shadows from all the enemies. You'll see that draw calls right here is really, really, really high. high. And that's because I have all those lights happening on the scene at once. So we're gonna talk right? about some cool ways to reduce those draw calls. Because Absolutely. And if you're doing, if you're doing next gen work, it's, it's, it's okay to have those. You can have thousands of draw calls. But mobile's know? different. But different mobile, is a, is a, it's a totally different beast. No pun intended. So reducing <laughs> draw calls is the key. Yeah. Definitely, that's the target there. You wanna reduce draw calls. Yep. So let's talk then about uh, atlases on the slide deck. If we take multiple images and we pack them together to do a larger one, that is what we have as an atlas. You'll hear in game development, texture atlas or atlas a lot. And that's essentially nothing more than taking multiple images, adding them to a larger one. And so as opposed to the system painting these separate textures out and having to load up multiple textures, it has one texture and it can just map to different objects. Like Absolutely. one, you'll show when you do the, uh, the rubble demo, uh, part of that texture, if we look on the slide deck there in the lower right hand corner, part might be mapped to one object, part might be mapped to another object. So that reduces draw calls. Uh, on the UI elements in Unity, what they initially brought out as a new GUI system, uh, and actually 4.6 beta that's downloadable now, that has a brand new GUI system on there. We looked at some GUI elements yesterday in creating a 3D game. Uh, those are auto atlas is what it's called. So that kind of packs everything, your images together on the back end just to save on performance. And Unity does have a sprite packer that you can use for your 2D assets to help optimize those a little bit more. And I'll show you a little bit demo of that. But let's talk about some ways to reduce draw calls. Um, in reducing draw calls, static batching. We're gonna look at a demo of that. That's, uh, that was what I was mentioning, is a pro feature. And that will basically take your objects that don't move and we mark them as static. That behind the scenes combines your geometry for those objects, optimizes drawing them out. Now dynamic batching, that is free, in the free version, that works automatically. So those are objects that are running around, moving around, that will, uh, that sharing happens automatically, the batching happens automatically, you don't have to worry about that. But there are a couple things that you do have to worry about, that has to be the same material shared. So if you have zombies running around, those zombies have a shared material, as long as they're less than 900 vertices in that zombie, this will happen automatically. Uh, and also as long as those objects don't have any uh, real-time shadows on them. Ideally, you want to atlas everything you can, right? Take your sprites, pack them together, your textures, pack them together. And I know you do this quite a bit, and you'll mm -hmm. show that when you look at the, uh, the rubble one shortly. Absolutely. In Unity, they have the old GUI system. It's still, you can use it in the new versions as well. Uh, and that old GUI system, you kind of did things by code. You had an on GUI method. You drew things out to the screen, and that was not very performant, so to say, for draw call. So we want to try to use their new GUI system. Some folks call it uh, UGUI in the uh, Unity editor. You actually see it called UI. That's the new one that you want to use. That's that's definitely quite a bit more optimized. And that's really, really, really going to help in the draw calls too. I mean, it, packing all those sprites together as a single sprite sheet, you're going to have a dramatic difference, a dramatic difference that you're going to see in those draw calls. You're going to go from probably 20 or 30 down to one. Let's look at some 
performance enhancements from reducing those draw calls, let's shall we? Let's do it, yeah. All right, so let's switch over to my computer here. We're going to look inside of Unity here. I've got a scene opened up in ZPS, 